Okay, I also wanted to talk about handling errors as a, another important component for referees. I've already committed to talking about mistakes in depth a little later. So I wanted to talk specifically about how referees go about handling errors when they occur. Uh, I think one of the most important things to do is have a self-recognition as a referee that an error has occurred. And it's not always, um, it's not always intentional or the referee's doing. Um, there, we talked about earlier through commands how those uh, are, are signified and, and serve as a communication from the referee. But ultimately, there's got to be a connection between the referee and, let's say, the the, the time the timekeeper scorekeeper, uh, and that's got to be administered correctly. So. Uh, a referee can score two points for red and ultimately it's given uh, to blue. So in some cases it's not necessarily the referee's mistake that's got to be corrected, but it's got to be handled. Uh, one of my criticisms of referees that I see and, and something I would always recommend to those uh, looking to enhance their skills is that whenever they do make a scoring uh, gesture that they immediately look to the scoreboard to see that it was recognized and it was you know delineated correctly on the scoreboard and by doing it immediately in other words as soon as I hold up two point score I look to the scoreboard and I make sure that the two points hits the board where I expected it to um, by doing that immediately it gives you the greatest chance of opportunity of recognizing the mistake, not assuming it was done correctly, but also the most amount of lead time to fix it. Sometimes uh, error correction can be handled during the match. The challenge there though is uh, in the instance of, for instance, fixing the scoreboard, is you can be distracted from the action. It's not always convenient to call timeout when somebody's going for a submission because you want to make sure that the scoreboard is correct. So oftentimes there there becomes this time frame where you know you're looking to the table and trying to <laughs> trying to explain that something's got to be corrected either through formal gestures or you know some other means to make sure that the correction happens and you're missing the action while that's happening. So one of the, I guess the critical sets of skills is again the recognition that a mistake has occurred and also being able to handle it effectively without missing the next scoring scenario for instance and uh, snowballing the entire issue. Because once a, uh, a chain you know, reaction occurs, and, and again, this snowball reaction where a mistake is followed by a greater mistake and so on, it becomes really hard to unravel, especially while the clock is ticking. Uh, I mean, one recommendation is to find a convenient position to stop the action, to actually walk over and, and make sure the board is corrected. But that takes some, some discipline and experience to perform correctly. So, you know, referees have to be aware that taking their eye off the, the uh, action itself of the competitors to correct the mistake can lead to others. Additionally, uh, self-recognition of mistakes is sometimes ego-driven. Um, a referee can make a mistake, get feedback from, from the crowd, from the coaches, even from the competitors that they've made a mistake and naively believe that well it's the decision I made and my decision is final and just move on. So the most common scenario for uh, handling errors for referees is to ignore your mistakes. Uh, now this could be troubling for, for two reasons. One is it could be enough of a distraction that even though you're watching the action, it's it's caught up in your mind that, that you're getting all this negative feedback perhaps or that you think you made a mistake and it can lead to additional mistakes, just the, the stress of the situation. Um, so, so that's one possibility. The additional possibility is by ignoring feedback 
or not taking the time or having the discipline to say, hey, I made a mistake, that's okay that I made a mistake, but now I have to fix it. And I, again, I think that that is a, a discipline or an experience that's, that's not something you can teach to people. You can tell them, but again, in the heat of the moment, depending on the circumstances, it can be very challenging. Um, a circumstance that comes up a lot that, that I, would, I would coach referees against doing is being afraid to change their mistakes because specifically of the feedback they're receiving from either the crowd or from the coaches. So uh, the scenario is that you know you you miss something that everybody else believes is a sweep. Uh, so immediately everyone from you know the competitor to the coaches to the crowd is screaming at you what the hell's wrong with you that's a sweep that's two points so the fear I think that referees can have is if I correct my mistake and I change it the appearance is not that I've made it I've corrected a mistake it's more that I've been incorrectly influenced by the outside input that I'm receiving. And what I would coach against that is to say that outside input can be good. I think the moral compass that referees should have about error correction is they should have a desire to do whatever the correct answer is. Uh, you can always stand by an error correction that yields the correct results it should matter where the input came from. So if you hear the crowd yelling at you, and, and part of the challenge there is also it's not always polite information. Oftentimes it's rude and crass yelling. Um, you should accept that input, digest it, use your experience and knowledge of the rules, and then use that to correctly apply the rules for the right outcome. Uh, too often referees are concerned, and I think fans and spectators too, that there's this bias or manipulation of the referee merely because he listened to outside inputs. But the reality is, if he missed a call, he's able to change it in a reasonable time frame to the correct call then all is right in the world. Everyone should be happy with that. And there shouldn't be accusations of manipulation. Now, there are reverse scenarios where a referee has made the correct call and outside inputs therefore uh, force him to reevaluate the right call and then change it to an incorrect call. And while I would contend that outside using outside input um, could create that scenario, I would just say that that was not a correct application of how you should be, um, you know, utilizing that input. Again, if the moral compass is that the 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 correct application of the rules is administered, then again I don't think it should matter where it came from and we can argue about the fact after the match whether the ruling was correct or not and I think people should get off their high horse about you know whether it was a manipulation or, or, or uh, a bias or a favoritism and understand that ultimately the the correct outcome occurred now something I'll caution about outside input or correcting uh, errors in general is the time frame. Um, I would say it is least desirable, almost to the point of um, uh, creating a really bad situation, to correct the mistake after time has elapsed. Because after time has elapsed, uh, there is a given outcome on the board. Uh, usually, obviously, it's going to be a win for either competitor or ultimately a tie. To then change the score never makes anybody happy whether it's right or not. It just is a really bad time to do it. Now, 
sometimes you know these incorrect calls and these error mis uh, corrections have to occur and it happens with 10 seconds left on the clock I mean what are you gonna do time stopped and now I have to fix it but I would caution that by being diligent about watching the scoreboard using the out the outside input effectively quickly using the next 30 to 45 seconds to reevaluate your mistake and correct it uh, is is a preferred course of action and it's not a it's not a perfect science it's not desirable but it's you know the best use of, of handling mistakes that, that I've come across and I think ultimately most competitors coaches and fans can be made to understood why a call was changed uh, under those circumstances so I think what I would want uh, non-referees to understand is that these are part of the steps that a referee has to go through during any given match understanding that mistakes uh, to some degree are inevitable handling them effectively is a skill in itself that isn't always handled well when we factor in some of the other things that referees are going through whether it's you know uh, again these loud outside inputs there's fatigue involved after long days uh, becomes more and more challenging and I think the the uh, grappling community as a whole should be more sympathetic to a referee's ability to recognize and correct his mistakes now something that's uh, adopted as as an automatic mechanism uh, to, to help um, this error correction process has been the adoption of the three referee system and, and if you're not familiar that's a system where there's a main referee controlling the action and scoring and and two corner referees that are basically there in a double check capacity that in itself requires a separate additional set of skills for the center referee to work in that system because now he's not just watching the the action for his own determination he knows he's being double checked he has to instinctively know that when he makes a decision that he needs to look to his corner referees to see if that they that they agree with it and of course that system is designed that if uh, there's a majority decision that differs from his he would ultimately change his score immediately to whatever that they had decided from the corners now the, uh, a tricky part of that scenario is the center referee must understand that sometimes uh, the absence of a score has to be acknowledged so what that means is if a scoring event occurs and he doesn't believe that there's a score he still needs to recognize that there could be a potential mistake and he still needs to look to his corner referees to see if they are signaling for a score. It's very easy that if you don't give a score not to have the cue to know that you may be overruled. Now it's not necessarily rocket science you know and, and, and the, the two corner referees will ultimately try to do the right thing to get his attention but uh, I think if you're not diligent about it it can be more uh, more confusing and uh, create an aura of unprofessionalism if it's not handled effectively and the the three referees are not working you know in synchronicity something else that's I guess a reflection of the adoption of technology now has been the notion of uh, video replay and I think that this was fairly well employed at the world championships uh, where uh, a referee sits at the table and has the ability to view a different angle, a camera angle, uh, that may be different from the referees of particular action and assist him in uh, either missed scores or changing scores that he, that he has posted uh, in a correct manner. So uh, it's, it's possible also that he has the ability for uh, multiple views on the video screen which will give him an even greater opportunity to make the correct call and and uh, send that input in to the the main referee uh, you know to, to again affect the correct outcome I think this is really interesting technology and something that you know should be considered or employed I can tell you that uh, it's it could be an expensive option 
and is something that while we may see it embraced at the highest levels of competition, professional events, you know, semifinals or finals of black belt competitions or, or advanced pro divisions, it's not something that is likely to be incorporated for every match, for every belt level at every tournament. So we'll have to see how that progresses. I guess a further technology advancement may be, you know, much like what we see with the criticism of police and their judgment is going to, you know, body cams where a ref is wearing, a, you know, a GoPro on his head or on his chest and we get um, an even better view at least of what the referee, literally the, the referee's angle um, to see if that offers, you know, additional reference to make sure that matches are being uh, more effectively uh, scored and policed. So, I mean, all these these potential advancements or enhancements uh, with the three referee system, I think are are uh, are great. I think they help, uh, you know, perhaps enhance the level of competition. But I will just, you know, caution the grappling community as a whole about how. Uh, the impact it will have, I don't think it will necessarily yield 100% effectiveness. We won't, in other words, it will not eradicate errors or mistakes. It will probably, uh, we'll, we'll learn that additional mistakes are made because of this capability of, of constant review or different angles. Um, you know, and something that comes to mind in other sports uh, is you know comments from somebody like Joe Torre in baseball by saying hey you know we're we're humans humans make mistake and that's you know paraphrasing that's part of the charm of the sport is that uh, much like real life it's imperfect uh, so I think at some point the grappling community has to address uh, whether they feel that's a necessity or again that's getting too deep into the weeds of of uh, trying at this notion of 100% correctness and whether it works for us as a whole. But it'll, it's an interesting development that's, that's definitely, uh, definitely in play.